Lucas Spielberg. And this is Ashton Spears. And we definitely watch WGS TV. We're going to own it. Definitely watch it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, really. Respect my veteran! <laughs> Welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and ZFX TV. I'm the WrestleGamer, Donald Bean from the Boudreaux, and I got a very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the WGS TV team from Canada. Welcome, Dave. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing just fine as we're looking at Bioshock Infinite. As you guys have already seen, we finished the playthrough series. Now the review. Forget what you know about Bioshocks 1 and 2 because this game, we're not under the sea. We're in the sky in Colombia. You are Booker DeWitt set to, uh, with finding a girl to wipe away a certain debt that Booker has. Now, what exactly this debt is, it's never really been made relevant in the game. But towards the end, we kind of figure out, you know, the really... The premise of the game but let's talk about the game in general in fact graphically speaking dave this is a very beautiful game yes it is like you wouldn't believe the atmosphere feels so nice and like just everything looks beautiful like, damn yeah yeah definitely um well let's talk about some of the of the other noted differences in this game for one thing you know when you uh, find the girl elizabeth uh and she, one thing I do like is the fact that during battle scenes, she is not in any danger. You know, she finds a place to hide, and so that way you don't have to worry about, you know, if she dies, then boom, game over. You know, you never have to worry about that, and I think it was a, a good idea for them to kind of put that in. Uh, we also have different vending machines, and, you know, in the first two Bioshocks, we had plasmids, and we had and uh, stuff like that and now with th with this game we don't have the plasmids we have what's called vigors and salts and to, to me it's a noted difference because in the games you would normally have to inject it in, into your arm for you to use the powers in the first two bioshocks and this one is basically a liquid that you drink and uh i found that a, a few of the the vigors were kind of useless but uh, well, Dave, let me ask you this: Which uh, which two vigors did you find yourself uh, using more than the others? Uh, probably uh, possession and the uh, the crow one. The murder of crows. Yeah, definitely, because it was just more useful, like, like to like confuse enemies, you know, so you could like, reload or you know, like tick your bearings and you know, that kind of stuff. Well, possession was one that I did use, and another one that. I found myself using more than anything was actually Devil's Kiss, the fireball, because it always did quite a bit of damage, and it really did help me out quite in, uh, a lot of the uh, a few tough spots uh, 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 during the game, as a lot of people have seen through my playthrough here on WGS TV, uh, my run-ins with uh, the Ghost of Lady Comstock, and I hated, I hated those. Those were were really, really ter terrible and uh, terribly difficult to go through, but. Um, uh, another thing is uh, the weapons that were made available in the game. Uh, for one thing, you know, in, in, in the, any of the vending machines, they were, they were either health kits, you know, upgrades to your weapons, or um, re refill on your salts, which was basically the fuel for your vigors. Yeah. You never could buy a weapon in a game. Basically, whenever you wanted to find a good weapon, you would have to pick it up off the ground. And in, in some instances, some players, from what I've heard, they've found out to be, you know, kind of difficult that they couldn't buy a weapon that they wanted out of a vending machine. Did you kind of feel the same way? No, I did not. I just felt that they spread out the weapons, so, you, you know, you find the new stuff later on in the game. You know, it was just better that way, for me, at least. All right, well, uh, a few uh, the weapons we had available in the game were the Broadsider Pistol. We had the Triple R Machine Gun. We've had, uh, see, the China Broom Shotgun, which is a big old, big old pistol. Uh, we also had the Bird's Eye Sniper Rifle. And, and I found that sniper rifle to be easy to handle, but, you know, you only want to use that in kind of like, uh, like in a very stationary position where the, gun, the guns can't, uh, where the people can't shoot you. 
You know, you never want to, you know, it's not like in Call of Duty where you can, like, run and gun. You know, where you can just, like, no scope but a sniper rifle on Call of Duty. You don't have that, it doesn't give you that same kind of convenience it would be in, in Bioshock Infinite. But you guys and gals need to remember this game is set in uh, 1912. We also have the Barnstormer RPG. We have the Huntsman Carbine. Car the Carbine was actually a very powerful weapon, you know. It, it, it's very accurate, and it's, uh, it's a good shot range, and very powerful. I found that to be a... Uh, it, it helped me out in, in certain uh, situations. The Pig Volley Gun. Now remember, I'm reading the names as they're read in the uh, in the manuals and the, the, the guidebook, guys. Got the Patty Whacker Hand Cannon. The pepper mill crank gun. The crank gun. The pepper mill crank gun have only been available in several, uh, in only a couple of uh, instances. One, uh, picking it up off the uh, the robots in, in the game, and you, in certain instances where Elizabeth can create tears. So, and we'll cover that in just a minute or so. We also have the Vox Huntsman burst gun, the Vox Triple R repeater. We also have the Vox Pig Hail Fire. Basically, the Vox have their own style of weapons as well. And uh, the Heater. So, that's basically it. Um, Dave, in your opinion, which two guns were the best guns to use in the game? Well, I definitely liked, really liked using the hand cannon. It was just, you know, it was powerful. It was easy to use. It was like, you know, good spread. It did a lot of damage. It, it could be upgraded, of course. And then just usually, my other one usually is any kind of like machine gun, you know, like that kind of thing for a nice, you know, spread and all that. Okay, and guys, among the three vigors that you heard us say, the possession, devil's kiss, and and murder of crows, there's also shock jockey, there's bucking bronco, um, there's uh, also the charge. Uh, there, there were a lot of good vigors to use in that instance, you know, in, you know, in that area you're, you're in. But w when you want to look at more commonly used vigors. You know, the, the three vigors that we've already mentioned, the Murder of Crows, the Possession, the Devil's Kiss, were, to, were for me and Dave, we, the, they were the three more commonly vigors that we find ourselves using. Shock Jockey can be used in some other instances, but I, I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, Return to Cinder was also a, a good one, especially when you're being, like, overpowered. But the gear... Now, I think one of the more disappointing aspects of the game, Dave, was the gear, because the gear, it really, to me, I really didn't find any differences whatsoever when you changed gear. Well, I actually did, because, you know, if you wear, you have a certain gear on, if you choose, like, a certain right of combination of gears, you would be really powerful, you can, you know, you know, even there's even a gear that actually regains your health by, you know, hitting the, like, milling the guys, you know. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, like, there are useful ones. There's ones where you can jump up, you know, you jump onto a guy and you just, you, you get, kill him on shot, or you, when you, uh, milling him enough, he'll explode with electricity. The more commonly, when you think of this game, the very first phrase that you hear in the game is bring us the girl wipe away the debt the details are kind of hazy but a debt must be paid that much we do know the year is 1912 and you are booker dewitt finding yourself being tossed in a rough sea seas aboard a rowboat hailing from an unknown past the couple before you prattles on and back and forth as if you're not even really there leaving you to mull over the the contents of the box you've been given, a pistol, a key, some postcards, and a message to bring the girl unharmed to New York City. There's a question, though, on every, every horizon in this game, and not, in the game, there is just not an answer in sight. I mean, I want to say this. For one thing I've really encountered throughout the Bioshock series was a, a great deal of puzzles in the game. And, you know, when you think Bioshock, you would think there would be like a good mixture of puzzles along with uh, action and adventure in the game, which we do find a great uh, deal amount of in this game. Um, and despite for the, I want to say the opening, where you're in the lighthouse trying to decipher a, a code, there's really not many puzzles, if any, at all in this game, Dave. Yeah. 
Uh, did, right. you, did you find uh, that a lack of puzzles might have hurt this game a little bit? Not at all, actually. Because, you know, the, the atmosphere, the music, you know, the way that everything looked, the way that, you know, how they portrayed every, you know, new area, everything was just so good, it didn't really matter. The this, this story of this game, it is just so well done by Irrational and 2K Games. Um, you know, they hit every mark, you know, it left you wondering, you know, what's going to happen next, you know, just what is Booker DeWitt's connection to Elizabeth? What is the connection between her and Comstock? And and throughout the entire game, you're, you're wandering through that and you're trying to find out just what exactly is going on. And not only that, you have to deal with your enemies, which are a combination of Comstock's followers and the Vox Populi. One of the harder enemies to beat in Bioshock Infinite, you know, it, was the handyman very very difficult to beat you know only having having only having two really set weaknesses you know the head and the heart they were so massive and so agile and they were very very difficult to beat but i want to say one of the better aspects of bioshock infinite were the skylines you know they were so great to use they were a great way to get around you know especially when you have to like get to certain areas you know gain an advantage on an enemy skylines and, and hooks and stuff like that they were great great additions um to the game and i gotta say you know when we're getting towards the ending with comstock and you know and you finally get a and you finally get what the reveal is in the ending and i'm you know, and if you guys haven't seen it yet on the walkthrough, I'm not going to uh, reveal it to you. You guys have to check it out for yourself. You know, the ending of the game, you know, a lot of people I've heard say, uh, you know, it, it, you know, you get a real, it's a real satisfying ending. And I didn't get that. I didn't get that satisfying ending. You know, and it was more like of a shock ending into the game and I, I gotta say you know when you're expecting to see a game full of twist you get that or at least I got that with Bioshock Infinite my overall score for Bioshock Infinite I am definitely giving it a 4.5 out of 5 this is indeed a great game to play um, it was really well done. I had so much. I got so much enjoyment out of it. Now, there are also three single-player DLCs that will be coming out very soon for Bioshock Infinite. And of course, when those DLCs do go up, there will be uh, walkthroughs and there will be reviews of each DLC. With the first one being Burial at sea so that's going to be something to look forward to uh, as well and um i've heard uh, reports and stuff like that that the first dlc burial at sea you not only return to rapture but you'll actually be playing as elizabeth so this could be very unique to see where they take the story a Bioshock Infinite from there because of the ending was indeed quite of a shock and that now we have burial at sea We're hoping that it's, it's got to have some sort of a follow-up to the ending the, of the main story in Bioshock Infinite um, I really don't have anything bad to say about this title. Like I said, this was a, a good challenge, a fun game to play, and I look forward to the more DLC coming from Bioshock Infinite. So again, my official score is a 4.5 out of 5. What I want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, 
your thoughts on Bioshock Infinite. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Fans, don't forget to like the Facebook page. For, that is facebook.com slash WGSTV. And don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash TV Network. So special thanks to my friend Dave from Canada. So with that being said, I'm the Russell Gamer. Double B Billy Bujo saying, bring us the girl, wipe away the debt. Would you kindly? I'm hailing, 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 I'm hail